Hi, my name's John. Welcome to part three in a series all about repairing DEIs with your friend Bob. Anyway, I see Bob just come in, so how are you, Bob? Let's have a smile. Oh, I'm coming, I'm coming back to the shop. <laughs> How's the same, John? Not bad, Bob. Right. I'll tell you what's happened today. There's a, there's a package coming oh, to me, right? but I'm pretty sure it's for you. I've opened it at the back, it's definitely for you. Oh, <laughs> lolly sticks. Lolly sticks. Lolly sticks. Champion, I'm going to be using some of them. I think you've got a lifetime supply of right, Here's your bench, I'll let you. Going to do a lot of talking today regarding what to do and how to do it regarding oils, what you use in your DTI. And the easiest way I can break it down is you have two types of engines. You've got a petrol engine, a diesel engine. The diesel engine uses diesel engine oil, petrol engines use petrol engine oil. It's the same with clocks, DTIs. Clocks run 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 52 weeks of the year. The oil what goes into clocks is designed for that. It's not designed to go into DTIs, so you use instrument oil in your DTIs. Really, in any, any workshop, you should have a bottle of instrument oil because you'd use it on your micrometers, your depth mics, any of your measuring gear. If you look after it properly, should be always nicely lubricated and wiped down with an oily rod, but it should be instrument oil rather than anything else um, you get these super lubricants um, and the first thing you need to say when you get these super lubricants it says shake before use it's no good if you've got to shake it up like an aerosol like you do for your paint for your car you've got to mix it so that means whatever's inside that super lube I've got one on the bench it, it separates after a period of time so You've oiled your DTI with it, you put it in its box and it's in the drawer for a month, that oil's going to separate, it's going to be no good. So always use, wherever possible, instrument oil. Now, when I very started doing this, there was very little information I could get out there. And I read in a magazine, here's the one what's, well, what has the number three on it, I won't advertise. And I did start using that because I didn't know what else to use. And I did say push comes to shove, you can use that. And the reason I said that was because you've got a DTI, it's been in your drawer for five years, you've watched John's videos with me on, and you go to take the bits. You take the bits, it's all over your bench, it's either two things that's going to happen to it. It's either going to get in the bin or you're going to send it to me. You're going to, you might put it back together. But it might not work. So again, it might end in the bin or you might send it to me. I'm not asking for you to send it. Or third option is you're getting it all back together and it works. But you have nothing what you could oil it with. But you might have some of that with what's got the three on. So just use that. As you remember with the John Bull when we first took it apart, it was absolutely swimming with oil. You don't need one of these to oil it. You don't need one of these micro pens to oil it. You don't need one of these little bottles to oil it. You don't need one of these precision oilers to use to oil it. They give you far too much oil for where you want to go to use on the clock on the DDI. Um, and I'm going to show you where, not on the, the clock we actually put in the finished putting together, on all clock units that I've got. Because they're easy to focus on with it because they're not as little as that little one what we aren't working on but i don't mind if i put too much oil on just to show you what to do and what not to do because i don't want to start taking this little thing back to bits again because it's just been a nightmare so here we go round three is that enough now i can see it on john's camera here um what i refer to as oil sinks now I'm just, just sharpening one of these little sticks up and you, you need to put a flat on, I'll show you in so it, it, it's uh, sharpened like that, like a, like a point Now believe it or not, these two movements here this one and this one is actually not the same, they're for the same company I don't think the company makes these DTIs, I think they just put the name on them but that one and this one is basically the same. Now, depending on how many pivots and that 
um, a moment's got is depending on how many oiling places you need to oil. Now, some DTIs have them, some DTIs don't have them, and that's these little countersink holes in here. They're called oil sinks. Now, this particular movement here, if you can see it on camera, doesn't have any. So, this particular movement, as it is on the bench, has six oiling points. That's three in the back. One, two, three. And on the front, it has three. Get that down and shut. All the way around. One there. One where the main hand is, and one past the main hand, which is there. There's no, there's no oil sinks. I won't turn this one over because it'll give the game away what it is. But this one has exactly the same underneath, but it has them oil sinks. Now, I can only imagine when somebody's they've taken the date out of bits and they put it back together. Now, the what I see is if the date I if the movement doesn't work on its own, I know this is a dirty movement, but if it doesn't work on its own without any oil, then you've got a problem. Because it should work without any oil. Put some oil on, it'll work better. But if it doesn't work when you put it together, it, there's something wrong. So, all I can imagine is when somebody's come to it, they've, get, they've gotten it, they've took it a bit, so it doesn't work. So they just go daft with the oil, and they just this oil, these oil sinks here. They must fill them up because if you remember when I took the John Bolt a bit, it was just literally swimming in oil. You no need to use that much oil. What you need, I'll just shove them out the way. I've made this. I call it an oil well. I don't know if John's camera can pick it up, but it's got a dimple in the middle. Oh, I've got two. I've got a white one and I've got a black one. Right, the white one's bigger than the black one, but I prefer the black one because that's how much oil's in, in the in the well. This here, I'll get it in shot, it's not in its original bottle, but this is instrument oil. That's the colour of it. It's like water. It's not thick, it's not gloopy. This is thick and gloopy. Right? This is supposed to be precision. It is a precision oiler. I'll take the top off. Right? It has a little, um, get in the camera there. It has a little bung on the end, and when you press the button on the top, that button there, it's supposed to deliver. A, a well, it does. It delivers a um, a dot of oil. But that dot of oil, what you say there, is far too much for the DDI. You don't use that much oil. So that has been a position oiler is about as much good as a matchstick. Matchsticks have the uses, I suppose. So, I always start off what I call with a clean bowl. And I just put a bit of oil in the, the bottom of the well. Actually, that's too much. There's, a, there's enough oil in there to do at least five DTIs. But every time I do a DTI, I always make sure I've got fresh clean oil and when I'm not using it, put the cap on so it always keeps nice and clean. Now, <coughs> where's my stick? Oh, there it is. You don't fill the well, wells up. You, you never ever fill the wells up. All you need to do is to make that pivot wet. Nothing else, nothing more. If you, if you fill that well up, that's why I've got... Um, different movements so we can see like you're over oiling and all that sort of stuff um, as I mentioned in the very first one I've got a um, a battery dial gauge and in there care and maintenance it tells you not to oil the spindle that's that bit you never ever put oil on that you never put oil on the top middle or bottom what you do do is you put a bit of oil on the rack, but I'll come to that eventually, it's a different thing. But these spindles themselves, you, you put nothing on. <coughs> so you've sharpened your stick, dip it in your well. I don't, yeah, I'm working a camera, I'm not working directly in front. And basically, 
that's it, that's that oil hold. And if you had a magnifying glass, you'll see all you want is the pivot wet. You don't want, I don't know if John's camera will pick this up, but you don't want that sitting on top like that. That's far, far too much oil. I'll just, uh, it was a cottonwood bud. So that's why I brought different movements. I'll, I'll do the other one. All you need is just to wet. That, you, it looks like you've put nothing on, but I'm sure you. If you look under a magnifying glass, you'll find that's got a nice wet ring of oil. You do the same with the centre pivot, both sides, the slide, that slide there, you put a bit of oil on there. The only, the only thing that slides for is to stop the spindle from turning. It's just a guide and to hold that spring. It does nothing else. The only other part of oil is the rack itself. I'll make sure it's all fully extended. Again, a bit of oil on the thing and in there on the rack. That's it. So when that goes up and down, it lubricates the rack and pinion. That's it. That's that movement oiled. And as I say, if the movement doesn't move, if the movement doesn't move before you oil it, there's no point in oiling it because there's something wrong. Now, that to me is a lovely movement compared to this. Oops, I'm going to break it. Compared to this thing. I mean, I've taken the bits, cleaned it. As you know in the last video, these bushes here were dropping out. And it didn't matter how many times me I'd tried to put it back together, they were just dropping out, they were just falling out. So I tried to repair it, which failed. So I've rooted in my me, me spares and I've actually replaced that back. Because the original back I, I actually broke. But the rest of the movement is exactly the same. But again, on this I won't oil up with this stick. You've got your oilers, which is that one there, that one there, that one there, that one there. And the same on the other side. You have underneath the main hand, what I call your second hand, and your other two bushes. <clears throat> right, now I will show you how, again, it's just the same as I've done on that big one. You just put a little dab on, and that's it. If it had jewels in, would you still oil it, Bob? Yes, you would still oil it. Just the same. Just the same. There's, there's the people say, oh, yeah. If you look, if you go online and the, 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 the information what's out there is very, very scarce, John. And if they do it with Rolex watches, what's jeweled? So why don't you do it with a with a with a, yeah. a, a DDI, right? Now, no doubt, the the Royal what they're using will be specifically for jeweled movements, but instrument oil, as I've read online. It covers a wide range of aspects of what you need to do. Now, I'll put that to one side. I am going to do a video where I've got four of these in line. Well, John's got to do a video. And one of them is going to be what I call a branded DDI. The other three is what maybe people go to call cheap and nasty. But all four of them is made by the same company. Because a lot of these things are made by other people just with other brand names on. Now this particular one here, I you show you, I've took, I've took the, the name plate off the front, just so I can show you the oil pivots, is exactly the same as this one. But I know for a certain fact this, make, this manufacturer won't make these DTIs. And I'll turn it over. And can you say that? Kennedy. Made in England. I don't know if that movement was made in England, but certainly compare the two. I mean, some people say that that Kennedy movement is cheap and nasty, but I think that's cheap and nasty, and that's a Kennedy movement. And this thing here, which is supposed to be a really good make, is to me compared to that. That's nice and chrome, nice and clean. That that's made of that zinc stuff. Um, terrible. That's a, that's a John Bull. Little that's a little yeah. John Bull, aye. And they reckon John Bulls was good DDI's. Mm. No, it's it's. I've had them 
Where? They make tyres, don't they? Oh. People say, oh, well, it's like Yamaha. What does Yamaha make? Everything. You don't need to make boats. Mm. Yeah. So, right. We're going to oil this little unit here. And it's the same oil. Um, so, we're going to oil it. And we're going to start at the back. And basically, you've got... Sorry for purple. You've got four pivots. One, two, three, four. Oil on the stick. One, two, even that one's too much. Three, four. Now, I know I put too much on there, so I'll just use, soak up the excess. You don't want the well full of oil. All you want is the pivot, that's that shiny silver thing in the middle, wet round the brass bush. If the, if the oil holds full of oil, you put too much in. Now, the same with the front. Try not to put too much in this time. One, two. Right down that wall. Oh, I get in. Three. Oops. Four. Right? That's your four pivots oiled. And as I say, it's no point oiling. No point oiling if that movement doesn't move freely on its own. Now what I do, once I've oiled it, try and keep in the shot, I put the hand on, line it up a bit, let it come back on its own. Not too much. All I'm doing there is just working the oil in. Now you have to wind the spring up when we come to mount the movement back in its main case. That's the little spring that was giving all the problems. That was the, 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 the hair, hair spring. spring yeah. That's what I call what whatever the proper terminology for that's this spring here right in this movement I call it the pretension spring the idea with the spring is so everybody takes the date out the bits and they put it back together and they put it back together they don't put any tension in the spring so what happens is when it's moving there's backlash in the movement the hand will stop anywhere you want to do because there's no tension on that spring Again, depending on make, model, feel, what I feel like, it's usually, in this case, I'm going the wrong way, I would say two turns. So that's two full turns, and if I take it around without stopping the movement, getting me and in, it'll spring back on its own. Right, now you've got to make sure you wind it up, not against the spring, with the spring. So you roll the spring up? Yep, but not too much because no. you'll end up like that rat's nest. Yeah, yeah. So it's either one or two full turns, and all that does is put the movement under tension. If you let it go, it'll spring. Right? 